Good morning, everybody. Jackie here. Uh, Wednesday, September 30th, and today is my fourth day of walking for the uh, the virtual spirit walk. And um, it's it's uh, September 30th is also Orange Shirt Day, so I want, I'll talk a bit about that. Uh, first, well, you know, thanks to all the donors, I had to increase my goal yet again. Uh, happily, yesterday we passed two thousand dollars in donations through my page of the campaign um, and so I increased my goal to 2,500 so um, I'm really stoked so thank you all donors and it doesn't matter how much you gave because you know obviously not everybody has the same means so I've had uh, donations of up to 250 by people who acknowledge that they had a lot of disposable income you know, some people who I know are struggling, their parents, or, you know, raising kids sometimes on their own, uh, we're just able to give 10 bucks, and that's okay, I mean, I, I <laughs> you know, I see my friends uh, participate in similar fundraisers, and I, I try to give each and every time, and there's sometimes when all I have to spare is five or 10 bucks, but you know what, it still adds up, so I really appreciate um, all the donations, and I know some of you out there uh, have been sharing the fundraiser and you I know uh, and even if I don't know your situation I can't assume anything I don't you know uh, I try to not we have the tendency to assume but I try not to so um, I know some of you just are unable to give financially right now but you're sharing and encouraging people to donate and share and I, I really appreciate that too every little bit helps uh, we we're all doing what we can um, so yeah, Orange Shirt Day, so I was really, you know, I went on Facebook this morning and uh, I think half my feed is filled with people posting pictures of themselves in orange shirts or uh, changing their profile picture to one of those frames about Orange Shirt Day with the Every Child Matters logo or talking about Orange Shirt Day and I'm just like, wow, every year there's more and more people uh, gaining awareness of it. So just in case any of you watching don't know uh, what Orange Shirt Day is, it's something that started in 2013. And um, it's a day where we wear our orange shirts to honor the uh, people who went to residential schools. And, uh, you know, uh, some of you might know uh, residential schools, um, you can easily find the history of this. You can read the Truth and Reconciliation Report. It's long. I haven't read it all yet. It's, it's uh, very long, but I've read snippets of it. You can, there's the executive summary that you can look at um, to know the details of the history. So in 2013, a day was created to commemorate the people who went through that system. Some of them died there. Some of them died while trying to escape. Uh, so some never made it home. Some made it back home but felt alienated from their communities. And uh, so the effects are still ongoing today of residential schools. Uh, and one thing that bugs me a little bit is when people talk about uh, residential schools is that sometimes there's a failure to put it in a wider context because residential schools were part of a much bigger project of attempted assimilation and genocide um, and I find it unfortunate if people are left with the impression that residential schools were this one blip this one blemish on Canadian history or the history of whatever other where whatever other place where this happened including the US Australia Russia places like that and no I mean it's it's part of a wider thing where you know as soon as colonialism started colonization started uh, you know there were all kinds of things happening um, and up here in the north I mean it's different in different places but up here in the northern part of the continent um, there were displacements uh, land grabs land theft and um, you know, this is something I learned from, you know, reading, I don't remember where I read this, but also Nagazet, the executive director of the Native Women's Shelter for whom we're raising funds here, pointed out in a presentation that even as far back as the 1600s, there were attempts at residential schools. And the Jesuits on the East Coast 
were wanted already to take kids away from their families to try to indoctrinate them into whiteness and Christianity. So, and that failed because at the time they, I guess, the colonizers didn't have the the numbers yet and the the might <laughs> needed to force this to happen. But shortly before Canada became a country of its own, um, then the, there was, you know, you have the RCMP who would actually go and physically take kids. There were laws put in place where if you refused to send your kids, you could go to jail. So really, the, you know, so this... So there were things happening before residential schools and the residential schools and all those other things continue to have impacts today that we see in uh, the high rates of suicide, uh, domestic violence, intoxication. But we also see the resilience too and the resilience of, of people kind of working to improve things in their communities, people who have managed to preserve and you know maintain their languages and uh, traditions and ceremonies and so it's a beautiful thing to see and that touches a bit on again on the work of the Native Women's Shelter and other organizations where um, people are taking things into their own hands and uh, you know the, a lot of the women who wind up at the Native Women's Shelter and other similar places yeah, I mean, it has to do with these 500 years of colonialism, including residential schools. So thinking about these things and thinking about the people who were, uh, you know, targets of this. So again, the kids who were sent there, those who made it out, but uh, dealt with the effects for a lifetime, those who didn't make it out, um, the descendants of the survivors. Uh, you know, because of intergenerational trauma, having to deal with, with that. And also the families who, for multiple generations, you had families who had their kids taken away from them. And that's something that isn't talked about a lot either. Imagine a community where most of the kids are gone. And these imagine being a parent and not knowing. Or if you're a parent who went to residential school and you know what it's like, and then your kids are forced to go there. Uh, it's just... That, that kind of trauma is unimaginable. I'm a parent and I just, you know, and, um, you know, and, and just thinking about how kids were treated in these schools, the dehumanization um, that, that happened to, to so many of them there, uh, it's, it's really atrocious to think about. So Orange, this is what Orange Shirt Day was created for to commemorate this. And basically the story behind Orange Shirt Day is there's a survivor, a woman named Phyllis Jack Webstad, who um, started this. And when she talks about her, her um, experience with residential schools, she remembers being taken there and having her orange shirt, her favorite shirt. She was wearing her favorite shirt because I guess she was excited to go to school. Um, if I remember correctly, there, that might be inaccurate, so I take that back because I don't remember if that was part of the story, but she was wearing her favorite orange shirt, and uh, it got taken away from her, and so that's where Orange Shirt Day comes from, and I always worry that there's going to be some, you, you, we all know that person who's going to take this and go and trivialize the whole, well, orange shirts, who cares, you know, it's just a shirt. Well, it's, it's not just about the shirt, right? I think hopefully... <laughs> all reasonable people understand that it's symbolic of everything that's taken away uh, from a child and from their family so um, so yeah I'm hoping that whether you own an orange shirt or not uh, this might be like if you're gonna be doing any holiday shopping if you're doing one of these things where you're everybody's buying their own present or if you're buying stuff for someone else you know, get some orange shirts um, I'm lucky I have a couple of orange shirts, but this one here, um, we made it at Vanier College last year. Uh, we had Martin Aguilanova Loft who came to Vanier and we did uh, one of these uh, uh, silk screening um, things. He brought his, his uh, equipment over and um, we had a bunch of orange shirts. Uh, Angie Equal Equalak organized this for staff and students and uh, we did this in advance of Orange Shirt Day so that then on Orange Shirt Day a bunch of people would have orange shirts and it was so great to walk around campus that day and see all the orange shirts and um, I mean it's a somber occasion but it's also uh, 
you know, heartening to see more and more people gaining this awareness, which is tied into all the other stuff I've been ranting about in these videos. Uh, I guess before I go, I'm going to also mention, I think right now, uh, you've probably been seeing on your news feeds um, the story of an Atikamekw woman called Joyce Ech Echequan, um, who died at the Joliet Hospital a couple of nights ago. And it's, it's really atrocious how she, she, she died. She, uh, it was in her file that she has an intolerance to morphine because of a heart condition and she was t trying to tell them not to give her morphine but they gave her they gave her morphine and they gave her too much and she went on facebook live to record herself she was in so much pain and she was suffering and afraid she was gonna die and in fact she did but before she died and this was caught on her facebook live I guess they didn't know that she was recording. She was strapped down to the bed, but she still managed to record this. The nurses were calling her name, saying all kinds of racist crap. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. So this, um, this woman died, leaving behind a family, seven kids, a loving husband, and many other family and friends and community members. And it's just... You know, we're raising funds for the Native Women's Shelter here. Sorry, I had to pause because my phone was talking at me again, uh, <laughs> marking another kilometer. Um, so yeah, we're raising funds for the Native Women's Shelter right now. And this is one of the things that's affecting, well, all Indigenous people obviously are affected by racism, but Indigenous women are affected in a very particular way. Um, you know, we know... Uh, the, the concept of intersectionality, a, a term that was coined by uh, Kimberly Crenshaw, a black scholar, uh, years ago. And, uh, you know, when you have these different intersecting aspects of who you are on which people discriminate about, against you, uh, it's just they interact in, in kind of pretty extreme ways. So indigenous women have been subject to so much mistreatment in a colonial and patriarchal system um, and so you see this once again in, in this case and it's now it's gotten the attention of the Quebec government but this happened a year after the Vien, uh, the Commission Vien which was a, a report that took place uh, that was published a year ago almost exactly and uh, you know, where the findings revealed how much Indigenous people are discriminated against in the health system, in education, in social services, uh, in the justice system. And, you know, there's still this ongoing denial by the current Quebec government of systemic racism. Obviously, they don't understand what systemic means. So anyway, uh, that's another thing that is on the minds of a lot of people right now. There's a vigil. There's a vigil that took place in front of the Joliet Hospital last night. There's one happening in Montreal on Saturday, I think at one o'clock at Emilie Gamelin. And there's in, in a bunch of different communities. So a very sad, distressing, aggravating uh, thing that happened right now in the middle of, of fundraiser and it drives home the importance of what the work that the Native Women's Shelter is doing but also all the different organizations who are uh, lobbying for um, better conditions and the righting of wrongs and reparations. So that's it for today. I'm going to stop here um, and record the French version now. <laughs> started doing two languages as of yesterday so have a great day and thanks again to everybody who donated and those who are about to donate uh, thank you